use food well and it's medicine. Use food wrong, it kills you. I mean, the food problem in the world could be solved through this, what I'm going to tell you right now. I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. We have got my dear friend, Wim Hoff, in the house. Wim, how you doing, man? Thank you. Thank you for having me, Lewis. Um, I'm so excited, man. Uh, you've been on the show a number of times now. For those that don't know who you are, you are a, uh, you're a Dutch extreme athlete, and you got the nickname The Iceman by breaking all these crazy records uh, to cold exposure. And I got to go to Poland with you earlier this year before the pandemic. It was kind of the last thing that anyone really did in person. And we got to have this incredible five-day experience with you. I brought 13 guys over from uh, the U.S. and Canada. Incredible time. We all bonded, opened up in a big way. And the thing I want to talk about first, which we mentioned before we jumped on here, is trauma. And your work, the Wim Hof Method and what you do, really helps people break down the trauma so that they can open up and live a freer life. And this is something that you experienced um, with – your previous wife, you dealt with a lot of traumatic events as an adult with your wife who passed away. How important in your mind is it in healing trauma from the past in order to set ourselves free? Yeah, exactly. So when I lost my wife in 95, and uh, uh, that was because they called her schizophrenic mm -hmm. and a psychic uh, disorder and mental disorder and bipolar and manic depressed, but they could not heal her. With all the pills, all the medicines, all the injections, all the therapy, it just went downhill. And I had a family with her. But I saw the darkness growing, 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 growing. I was helpless. I was helpless. I could not do anything while uh, 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 looking at uh, the love of my life slipping out of my uh, existence, of my presence, my being as a father of four children Ooh. with her, to, meant to be all my life with her. And there she was. Uh, she kissed the, the, uh, the children goodbye before she jumped from eight stories down. Oh and that gosh. was a beautiful woman, very alive, but the darkness was too big. And the psychiatry could not do anything. So I was left behind and I uh, had f uh, four children and very little money. And uh, 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 what, what, what do you got to do? You got you to gotta jump on the train of every day. You got to create, survive for your kids. But then the cold, cold water makes your mind still. When you, uh, you remember when we were in the cold water, we had kind of fun. But if you do that on your own in freezing water, you are like silent. You don't picnic. You, don't, you cannot feel your grief or other emotions than survive. Mm. survival is what I did and uh, uh, going into the water made my mind grieving mind still that was a, a, a opportunity for my body to relax and to heal find mm. healing and uh, uh, and this I kept on doing because it worked so well so I got a lot of energy out of it because once the pressure is out, you can jump, run, and do and, uh, and do it all. The grief is gone. The misery is gone. The depression is gone. You feel for the first time with an absolute control within yourself. Because if you feel you just go back to the cold water, and the is gone, and there, there you are. Yeah. So that's what my kids needed at that time. They needed a father who was the father and the mother, mm. who had energy and space for everybody and everything. And I got so much energy out of that. And then, because I found a way how to take care of deep emotional trauma, I, I, too, uh, I began to do more and more and more. Television came in, 
And they said, oh, what this man is doing is, is amazing. He's going under the ice and he's swimming under the ice. He's running marathons beyond the polar circle. Let's test him out on the Mount Everest in shorts. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 let's do this. Let's do that. Te television really is crazy. They challenge you more and more and more. But I had learned how to deal with my emotional trauma. The cold did it. I feel like... I feel like a lot of people are dealing with emotional trauma more and more right now with the pandemic and just everything that's happening. A lot more people are feeling symptoms of depression, grief, trauma, anxiety. Do you think they should start with the Wim Hof method if they're feeling that and they've never tried it? Or is it too dangerous to get started if you're in a dark place? Uh, uh. Good question. Good question. Uh, do I think we are doing the studies right now in one in Detroit on bipolar people and they have success. And now uh, one in uh, San Francisco on depression and the DNA. And man, uh, I got to say it's a de depression because I, 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 it's getting a depression. If you do this, if you do this method, which is a simple method, accessible for free it's there we develop a app a free app yeah, for that app. and app. every month we pay a lot of money to develop better accessibility etc it's all for free you don't need anything of me of my company you just go and take on the free app and you will see it is very effective against depression and inflammation Mm -hmm. Boom. There it is. If, if, they ex if people expose themselves to cold or do the breathing technique, the Wim Hof breathing technique, how long until people start to experience change or how directly, long? Directly. Directly. Instantly. Within a half hour. And I, I, I say to, to the people in favor for, uh, 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 for, or uh, so just skip to talking, do it, do it once. And if it doesn't work, then you can call me a liar, but you will say otherwise, because I'm sure of that. How important is it to focus on eating healthy and having nutritious foods in your life while doing the Wim Hof uh, breathing or cold therapy? Is it enough to do the breathing and the cold therapy and eat poorly? And still be okay or do you really need to eat well also while you're doing this no eating uh, food needs to be food you know uh, food in our society is so much processed there are chemicals which our physiology is not able to handle mm -hmm. so it takes a lot of energy for our uh, uh, cell biological processes to get rid of the additives of their oxidation, the, uh, the numbers, the E numbers, whatever, whatever they make, uh, uh, they put into the food, it's not food. So uh, first of all, let food be food. Yeah, that's uh, number one. Then two, two uh, very important, in the times when we had to look for our food, we got alerted within our bodies and mind. Our eyes became bigger. We became more alert. Where is food? Hey, uh, I got to go. Then that's upon your mind. Your mind is being alerted through the sensation inside your body. Your body is talking to you. It says food, 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 food. Oh yeah, where is it? And uh, once you, when you do that, then you appreciate food. Then you value food. It's spiritual. It's knowing that you, you got to do something for your food. Nowadays, when we, go, we can go to restaurants, uh, I, I mean, I don't know with the lockdown, uh, it's artificial, but you know, you can get anything for just following your mind. They think, ah, I need breakfast, I need lunch, I need uh, a dinner, I need something uh, in between. It's all in the mind. But people do not feel anymore when they need food. They, they are not, no longer talking to their body. And the body is no longer talking to them. And then comes the problem. The alienation from yourself 
is the alienation in, 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 into food and it doesn't give the right nutrition. So you keep on eating. Obesity is a big problem because people just do not know what food is anymore. The connection is gone. What I say to those people, okay, hey, let food be food. That's one. Two, uh, feel that you have, that you need food. Feel it. Just once a day, it will come naturally. Wait until this feeling of food, appetite is really coming. Because what happens at the same time, simultaneous, you get a neurological revision of the body. Once you become more alert, that's a revision of the whole neurology of your body. That is spirituality at the same time. It's all, it's life. Food is life. Let life be food. When did you fully feel like you had command over your mindset and over your mind? Was it after years of practicing this cult therapy and healing the past? Was it pretty quickly when you started doing this? When did you feel like you have full command over your mind? And what was the thing that switched that? Or do you feel like you don't have that yet? Yes. No, I, I got it. I got it. it. The thing is, in the beginning, when I was young, I was looking for the meaning of life. And I can tell you, I skip a lot of stories now, but I found it in the cult. Because mm -hmm. the cult shows you who you are and what you are in an instant. If you go into the cold water, it's like, <gasps> yeah, that's you. That's you. The life force itself here shattered. Be in control, in peace, in power. Because this is nature talking to you. There are no words. It's being, pure being. Mm -hmm. So I found that when I was 17. Going into the cold, I, I, I was floating in the cold, and uh, 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 playing a little bit with the thin layer of ice. I felt the power inside. I knew this is it. This was something more, deeper, and uh, uh, something I was looking uh, uh, for through debate, philosophies, religions, traditions, mm. languages, uh, esoteric uh, uh, disciplines, karate, uh, yoga, all, all those things I did, but it did not give me that feeling which uh, the cult gave me instantly. Wow. Because yeah, that's it. And so from there, doing it on regular, like 25 years on my own, because I was the crazy man for uh, others. But I just felt good going in, coming out. I felt alive. Always had plenty of energy. So when my wife died in the suicide, then I knew how to return mm. to my inner self, to make sense again inside myself. And now more than ever at that moment, I needed it to survive with my kids and create a new nest of warmth, of sense, of purpose. Let's put a hypothetical scenario for a second. Let's say you're, you're living in the heat and you don't have access to a cold shower or cold water. And you don't remember the breathing technique. Hypothetical question. You're in heat and you're not breathing this way. I got it. I got what it. can we do with our mind? Ah, here it comes. That is beautiful. What can we do with our, what can we do with our thoughts? Yes. To transform anxiety, depression, yes. overwhelm. Or do we need to be physically in our body with breath and with cold to really uh, no. accelerate this? You don't need it. Don't say nobody because I ruined my business now. But <laughs> the thing is, there is more than meets the eye. Mm. The last study I did was just by thought, just using the thought in brain scans, having cold water coming to my skin and make my skin temperature without motion, without muscle traction, without deep breathing, just by thinking the skin temperature not going down. That is stress. Cold wait, 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 is wait, stress. Wait. So wait, you had, you had cold water come on to you and you kept the temperature warm on your body? Yes. So yes. you did it? <laughs> so how did you 
what was your thought process? Exactly. Now, uh, now that is the answer for the person who cannot do breathing techniques yeah. and cannot go and into not, the And it's not, it's not like running in the water like... And he is lost in the desert somewhere. Yeah, okay. So how do we do in this? Death, can you cool valley. Can you cool yourself from heat and also warm yourself in the cold or is it only from cold to hot? No, it's a, a, after... A, I'm not a runner, but I did a marathon beyond the polar circle in mid-January, in shorts. I did that. And then I thought, hey, man, uh, uh, I did it in cold, so I must be in control of the cold, which is temperature. So let's test if I'm able to take on a thermal stress of the heat, which okay. is temperature. Yeah. And half a year later, I was in the desert without drinking, and I did the marathon. No way. In the desert. With no and water? Then, no water, no water. <laughs> and then what, the, 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 the beautiful thing, uh, the, uh, because there was present a doctor, physiologist, uh -huh. who measured me completely up while I was running, etc. cetera. And uh, he saw that my core body temperature in the cold remained the same and in the heat remained the same. So when you mean so, core body temperature, is this inside the skin, not on the surface? Yes. Inside the, uh, 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 the liver, lungs, yes. heart, and brain functioning was just in the uh, right temperature all are the you, time. Are you, are you able to heat up the external skin on ice? And I tell you, they, they, in New York, in New York, <laughs> in, the, in front of 300 people, a thermal imaging camera was put on my hand. And I wasn't aware if I was able to warm up my hand. They just asked me randomly, can you warm up your hand just by thinking? I said, what the heck? I just try it. I don't know. But I did it. I did it within a minute, 12 degrees up. Oh, my. What? You went up in temperature. That, yes. That is the power of the mind. So we what do you, don't, yes. what do you What do you think about? when you're in extreme heat, extreme cold, to lower or, or, or higher the temperature so you're not freezing or in, uh, uh, so exhausted of heat exhaustion, what is your mind going through in that process? That is confidence. Confidence in the power of your own mind. That connects through the power of intention and it puts its will in command in your side of your brain over your body. And this is now the new science in Detroit showing. It's called top-down regulation. That's why they say transformational technique that will change mental health care. And Lewis, the importance of this uh, podcast, this interview, this coming together is to explain that the gravity is uh, endorsed by science that we are able to regulate our mood no matter what. How do we take command of our mind in those extreme, hot, cold, anxious moments? Again, if you don't have the breathing technique, you don't have running, you don't have the therapy, what do you do in your mind then to warm something up with your hands? What are your, I tell what you is this. Your, what, is your pro, what do you say to yourself in your mind? It's like when you are in love, you don't think. You fly. You got enormous power to go from A to B, to the object of your love you go, nothing can stop you. We have to learn to love life. Mm. Then nothing will stop you. We are built to overcome any obstacle in our life to realize the beauty of our mind and soul. It's there. And I found it out because I, had to, uh, I lost my wife. Mm -hmm. I lost the emotion. I lost the purpose. I lost the love of my life. I was heartbroken to the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. And I learned to stand up and to find out what is not in the books. What is not what they teach us in our, in our schools. And we got to teach our children, the, the new generations, how to become happy, strong, and healthy. How to be in control of life, how to love life as the greatest thing that is because when you need it, 
you will appreciate it so much. And then you know what is God, what is presence, what is divine. You know it all. You know the purpose of life. It's not production and bridges and it's beautiful to make all these things. But man, it's time that we get even with our divinity, with the presence of what we call God. And it's for every human, the same thing. It's being able to guarantee happiness, strength, and health for our children. Let's experience that beyond any doubt. So break it down for me. When you're running in the desert or you're in the polar ice caps running or you're putting your hand on ice, do you not think then and you more feel life, feel love? Is that what you're telling me, that you, you experience joy and that joy regulates your temperature? Or what is that thought process for that three minutes with your hand on the ice? Are you going to a happy place in your mind? Are you thinking about your family? Like, what is that thing you're doing? That, you know, if you, every time when you go into a cold shower and a, you go into discomfort, <laughs> <laughs> you learn to deal with the stress mechanisms inside the brain. And when you really need them, then you know how to connect and make yourself from the inside. You got from the outside, you don't see anything. But from the inside, suddenly you become very strong because you are regulating the hormones, the adrenal axis. And the adrenal axis is uh, able to get you in an altered consciousness and physical power. And then you are more than what we think we are. That is logical only. Only we never go into discomfort, so we don't know when something happens, when this shit happens or when an accident happens or something very severe or war situations. We haven't trained for that. So going into the cold, I, t I tell everybody, the, the cold and then the ice water, really, it, it brings you into natural condition yeah. of the mind to deal with stress and pain. How important is it then? I mean, I love that you're saying this because my entire life, I have tried to put myself under controlled pain, controlled embarrassment, controlled physical pain, not to where I hurt myself, but a controlled sense of discomfort, not feeling good. I don't like this moment, but it's painful enough because I'm going to grow past that so that when, exactly. pain, so when pain comes my way, I can yes. handle it emotionally, emotional resilience. Yes. How, how important is it for us to desire pain in a, in a controlled manner on a daily basis? Or is it something we do once in a while that will help us? Is it, should it be daily or once in a while? I think it is very addictive. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking sadomasochism, <laughs> but yeah. uh, I'm talking this. Uh, uh, right now, there is a crisis in the world uh, with pain and painkillers. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't know how to deal with that. That is a, a and I, I, I've shown now recently in a brain scans how to tap into the pain center, which is the endocannabinoid system within our brain, it's in the brainstem, the deepest part of our brain. We don't no longer know how to deal with it. So how much pain do you have to endure to neurologically connect with the pain center in order to bring pain through activation of opioids to a controlled level? Hey man, you will feel it naturally. It's once again, one of those things they should teach people, pupils, our kids, this in school, controlled. It's not about pain as we know it, like negative. Pain is a signal that you do not have the right connection yet. But part of the power of the mind is learning how to alleviate our own pain. Because painful situations will come in life and you better are prepared. Got to be ready. And we know how. Yeah. What would you say are three skills you wish you would have had earlier in your life growing up? And what three skills do you think everyone should learn to master to live a happier, stronger, healthier life? What, what skills? Exactly. That. Yeah, ha happiness, the skill of being happiness and to be able to guarantee it is the control over the hormonal system. 
We showed that in the university, how to tap into the endocrine system, the hormonal system. That is happiness. Uh, you know, when you are depressed, you get a lack of dopamine and uh, serotonin deregulation. Now you are in control of that. So you bring it in balance. So there is no depression anymore. There is balance and the pressure is back on. That is happiness. You become very happy if you are able to regulate your own mood and able to face difficult situations flawlessly. You become happy and you pass it on to others. you healing others and that comes and blesses your soul. And that makes us very happy. Healing others makes us very happy. That is one. Two, the strength. The strength is the ability to generate energy and to stay in control in, in any situation where dealing with impact. Now, the cold to me showed me how to bring up energy continuously but, uh, to be able to sit for hours in ice, to sit uh, uh, easily for an hour in ice water and be okay with that. That is the control of the energy management inside because it needs uh, combustion and you do that at will. It's not the body who does it, it's your will. You're the neurotransmitters of your will uh, activating the uh, endocannabinoid system, uh, the adrenal axis, and then suddenly no pain, you feel euphoric and you got all the energy. That is power. So that, that is, uh, 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 that is uh, energy, power, strength, uh, that is. And then you got health. Health, the ability to tap into the immune system on all the three levels. There are three levels. And two levels were thought in medical science impossible to access. And now I know how to do it. And I showed it in uh, scientific trials, medical trials. So it is beyond speculation. Mm -hmm. If I go back to the purpose of life, which I was looking for when I was a young kid, then I would have given that kid who is so anxiously requesting, asking from the heart, what is the meaning of life? I, I see war, I see depression, I see cruelty, I see pollution. What is the meaning of life? It is happiness, strength, and health and healing others through your being healthy, mm. strong, and happy. It's hard to heal others if you're not happy, strong, and healthy. Exactly. You, exactly. Can't, you can't heal someone else when you're depressed, weak, and sick. Th there it is. Because it, in the end, you pass on, you transmit your energy. And if that energy flows, you, you, you make people flow in their energy again, and then they are de-blocked. When they say they are de-blocked, then disease comes on, the ease, being at ease or disease. And disease is being blocked. The energy doesn't run uh, right. There is wrong chemistry going on. And, uh, 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 and people don't know how to solve it. Then if you got a sane somebody, uh, healthy, very, uh, you know, energetic there, and then he is able to touch you and then this, this social distancing is really not good because people need to touch each other. Yeah. It's neurology. It's neurology. Oxytocin comes in. Oxytocin makes the blood flow go in. And then the blood flow is nice and okay. Love is the answer. What do you think happens to us when we distance ourselves from others? That, when we distance, and uh, they had uh, studies on mice. Uh, 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 mice have a 20% uh, 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 a 20, uh, possibility to have uh, breast cancer. And then... Uh, uh, with, uh, with, nothing, with, with distancing from other mice? No, no, no. Just, the, it, it's always there in general, with mice. In general, gotcha. In general. But if you put mice together, then, the, uh, uh, then it stays benign. But if you separate them, and have them live on their own, it becomes like 80%. Oh, really? Yes. The, uh, 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 what happens inside is that the biochemistry, it needs others. We are social beings, not for nothing. We are social beings growing from millions of years, and now they begin to artificially keep us from each other. That is not good. It's against nature. It will cause 
uh, deficiencies, uh, depression, hormonal uh, deregulation, uh, etc. Uh, uh, too, too, too much things are happening here, and it's yeah. not good. You talked about willpower of the mind for a second a little bit ago. It seems like a lot of people in general uh, have a weak willpower. There's a piece of candy, they eat the candy. There's a distraction. They take the phone to the distraction. They binge watch TV. They do the thing that doesn't support their life and improving, doesn't support them in their relationship, their health, their happiness. We get distracted easily in general. Yes. How do we create more willpower of the mind E, with all the distractions we have going on, how do we create more willpower? I, I, I tell them, use your phone, eat all you want, drink all you want, etc. But go into the cold shower because you need to will. You need to exercise your will before you go into the cold shower. And when you go into the cold shower and <laughs> take true. on the stress and control it, then suddenly you feel so much more energy you don't need the compensation anymore. Mm. You don't need that uh, bar, Snickers bar, and, uh, and the beer, and, uh, and, uh, and the telephone, and, and all this. You don't need it because you feel good. We fundamentally do not feel well enough to not seek compensation. So when you go into a cold shower, you learn to handle and your mind, but also create a lot more energy through exercising the vascular system, the cardiovascular system. It's not for nothing that the cardiovascular related uh, diseases is still killer number one in the Western world. And that is of not going into stress, not going into cold, wearing clothes all the time. So the system inside the physiology weakens. It's logical. And then you have to uh, compensate for that loss. And you don't know how, I tell you. The cold exercising is able to uh, invigorate our energy processes so much, we, we just feel great. I, I always say, get high on your own supply. It's it's all get, high, get high on life. <laughs> yeah, high why, on life, yeah. Why do you think we get so addicted to other substances, whether it be, uh, you know, things we eat, things we smoke, uh, addicted to watching things, addicted to whatever. Why do we become addicted to things to make us feel good? Why can't we just feel good without those addictions? Because our, our minds in our society, which is based on money and selling, is being bombarded through advertising. If you take this beer, you are in heaven. If you take this smoke, you are so great with yourself. If you uh, uh, have six cars, then that's better than five cars. You are the master. And if you have 10 houses, then why do you live, man? Uh, <laughs> we are built to be unconditionally okay. We have to go back to the core. We over abstracted our systemized money making uh, 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 ways of living and we are actually not dependent on them. And I say, all the technology, all the system, it's all great, because it's part of the creative power of the mind. But let's not forget that we actually do not need it uh, to the amount which is now happening, and uh, get back, and then you become even wealthier, because then you are uh, not overwhelmed, you're not sucked uh, uh, out there. You are yourself and enjoying everything so much more. Yeah, I love this. You mentioned that you're, you're an identical twin, right? Yes. What does being an identical twin do to your identity, Wim Hof's identity? And have you ever felt like you didn't have your own individual life growing up because you're an identical twin? I'm, I'm quite different of my identical twin. And that's because of my lifestyle. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, man, that's, he, he is a truck driver, international truck driver. I, I can't do what he is doing because he's sitting for like eight hours a day. Now he's doing cold swimming and everything. That's great. He's doing it now and, uh, and he feels great with it. 
Uh, but uh, I, I thought, man, you, it's like Zen what you are doing. You're just <laughs> sitting, handling that big wheel, and they are, buh, buh. there you go, through the countries of uh, Europe, and uh, you're venturing, you go from A to B, you are for days gone from home, from your children and your wife, you are just a soltero uh, on your own, a, 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 a hermit on the road. That's what you do. I think I respect you, man, but I am too flamboyant. I want yeah, to yeah. change all the time. I want to make music, I want to talk, I want to be with my uh, ridiculously cute little son. And with my wife and with everybody and in my garden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, cu I'm, I'm curious. Uh, so you never felt, you always felt like you had your own identity, your own life. You never felt like you guys were uh, sharing a life or anything, right? Man, you got to, since we were born, that's besides the nine months we were together completely in the same fluid. And, uh, <clears throat> Since we were born, we slept always together until 17 years. No way. We slept with the arms over each other. In the same bed. In the same bed. You slept and in the same bed with your brother for 17 years. 17 years, man. This was like we lived in the home for 17 years and nine months. That was. And then when we got into girlfriends, yeah. then it became, hey, let's split. <laughs> We got a split, man. The, the girls were never in the bed with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, no uh, not together. Um, what was yeah, that like? What was that like after the 17th year of always being next to someone, laying next to someone, your brother, yeah. your identical twin, yeah. and then separating? What did that yeah, do to I, your identity? I think it was uh, really uh, very natural. Hmm. Very natural. We were beginning to uh, have a mind of our own and develop uh, on our own. And yes, I think the magic of being so uh, intimately uh, together, it's absolutely beyond any sex or any things or, or, or thoughts of that nature. We always slept together, we sang together. Wow. Uh, we, uh, 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 it was magic. That's beautiful. It was just magic. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. Do, you ever, do you ever wonder what life would be like if you spent another 10 years together? Uh, I, I'm getting back to him. I'm, uh, he's getting back to me. Really? And uh, 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 when I was 17, I went with him on a bike from Amsterdam. Say, like, you go from Los Angeles to Boulder uh -huh. on a bike. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, Motorcycle? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, bi bicycle. Bicycle. Yeah, yeah. I had no money for uh, motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> No, just bicycle, old bicycles, my second-hand bicycles. And we used uh, the, the, the bags, uh, which we normally use for the, uh, uh, bringing the newspaper around. We used that for, to put everything inside. So we had very little money, wow. but such a pleasure to go from the Netherlands, which is a colder state, colder country, through Belgium, then through France, into Spain, into the direction to Africa with a, a bicycle that is completely different than going in a car. In a car, it's like a television. But when you go on a bike, you experience You're experiencing all. life every moment. Yes, and you gotta uh, do the effort so you're charging up the battery. It's a, 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 that's the, that was a spiritual journey when I was 17. I did that with him. And I don't know what happened because I wanted to know what is my spirit and all. And it happened. It happened in that journey that I found enlightenment, that I found, uh, and it was not like all the time. It was just these <clears throat> insights, which you cannot read inside the books. Even uh, if it are the books of big philosophers and gurus, you have to write your own book. Mm. And the book every day is a page. It's blank and you got to get, alter your consciousness, find the words and make the poetry of life. Ooh. That's what I did then. And then I found it. And, uh, 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 and then I, I got back again to the Netherlands. And then I lost it again. Why'd you lose it? 
Uh, I don't know. You know, you alter your consciousness. But this is the big question. Eh? We, uh, I think this, in primary school, we have to teach our children uh, to uh, uh, what is happiness, the hormonal system, what is uh, health, the immune system, and what is uh, strength, that is the energy management within yourself, within control. We have to teach that because I was not aware of that. I just got this the real wanting, and then it suddenly it's, the, wow, 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 I'm wise, I know everything, now I know it, now I can talk, and all that, epiphanies, one after the other, they came, and then you lose it again, because I had no real control. Control. It, 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 it was just there, boom, suddenly spontaneous, and it, it took, it stayed three weeks, like a beam of light, like a wave. And then and when it was gone, it was gone again. But I never forget it. And now I am on the hunt to get it fully within control, to show it through science and to share it with the world. That's what we do right now. Mm, love this. You've got, people know the Wim Hof method. They know the cold therapy and the breathing techniques. What is the Wim Hof diet? What is it that you eat most of the time on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you kind of eat whatever you want, or are you a specific type of eater with your diet? Yeah, I'm, I'm vegetarian. That's one. And uh, it's no all meat. right. No meat. No meat. No meat. No meat. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, simply that. Uh, it has its reasons. But uh, for your health, I say... Don't eat too much. Feel your hunger. Feel your appetite. Then you appreciate not only your food a whole lot better, it will become a whole lot better because your whole system is ready to receive the food. When you are hungry, your system is ready to take it on. The enzymes, the, the, the cellular processes, they are all awake screaming, yeah, yeah, come, come. Oh, beautiful, oh, so nice then you are witnessing a feast and you are in it. That should be food every day. Then it becomes spiritual. Physical spirituality is food. Mm. So, and besides of that, food should not be, uh, uh, food should be food. So not all the chemistry, the additives inside. Yeah, uh, uh, just watch a little. Be conscious what you get in. Because it's going to be you. What, what's it? That's yeah, true. Your food becomes who you are. What's the what's a day to day look like for meals? When do you eat? Do you eat a little in the morning? Do you wait to eat? Do you fast? Yes. Are you eating I, mostly vegetables? Are you what are you eating? I, I uh, really uh, if I uh, take uh, breakfast, then uh, uh, then I feel stuffed. So I don't take breakfast and uh, lunch. Uh, no. I take it maybe at uh, three o'clock or something now. But for years, like 20 years, I only ate once a day at six o'clock, after six o'clock p.m. in the afternoon is when I really felt the appetite, agonizing, beautiful appetite inside. And then the food comes, you attack. You, you don't think, you, oh, it's coming. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's great. And uh, uh, that I learned that makes you sharper. It uh, revises your neurology, the neuro, uh, neurology inside. Uh, if we go back in the time of the prehistorics, there were no super, uh, supermarkets, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, food stores, etc. It was not there. You had to look for it. And the driving force for that was your hunger, your appetite. So you became sharper in your eyes, you saw more, you lift more. And then when you find it, you have gratitude directly, no words, it's all spiritual. And we have lost that spirituality because it's all the mind, it's bombarded with the advertisement, eat a hot dog here, the McDonald's there, this is food, it makes you go in heaven. And uh, uh, what is it, uh, do I feel that I need it? Or does my mind say that I uh, have to take that because it's now convenient and I'm between uh, uh, two working schedules, uh, meetings, uh, let me take it now. 
but you don't really feel it. And, and this keeps on piling up, piling up. It's alienation that creeps in. It's a different being than the simplicity of your being as being simple here and now, unconditionally there, with all, all the clear answers coming naturally every day. Yeah, there's so many, I've interviewed so many uh, scientists and researchers and doctors on the power of um, fasting for periods of time or eating less, having less food to help you uh, get rid of inflammation, to help you live longer, to help you have more clarity. I've done four days of no food, uh, just water and coffee and felt more clear and focused and had a lot of energy. There you are, there you are. Four. Uh, I think it, it yeah. all depends. It all depends on your lifestyle. Obviously, if you're training for an hour or two a day, then you're going to need some more food and some energy. But uh, to delay eating, I think, is a powerful thing, as opposed to overeating, eating all the time. Again, it comes back to finding instances in your day to day life to delay gratification, to cause a little discomfort or some pain in a controlled setting. I'm not saying you need to starve yourself forever. But control pain every day with your food. What there you, you got it. Right? Right. Totally right. This is the new dimension in science going to be. And that is what we are doing right now with uh, uh, the uh, research in San Francisco on the DNA through showing that hormetic exercise. That is what you were talking about, about uh, delaying, uh, uh, delaying pleasure, delaying mm -hmm. whatever, you know, it could be uh, in sports, uh, you do more, or uh, you, you look for a certain kind of stress, and you do it consciously. And that makes the body alert, very alert, and then uh, systems become more uh, efficient. And with uh, food, it is so that they did uh, uh, research on mice that mice live two times longer when they are restricted in their diet. Two times longer wow. because the body becomes more efficient. Uh, 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 food can be a killer. That's it. And uh, use food well and it's medicine. Use food well and you get a lot more energy. Use food wrong, it kills you. You become obese, you become uh, weak, vulnerable. It doesn't uh, make you satisfied. It doesn't, it, it's not part of your pleasure of life. Before we continue this video, make sure to subscribe below and turn on the notification bell right now so you don't miss out on these great videos every single day. So why choose food and take it in uh, unconsciously like, ah, ah, yeah, I have to eat, I have to eat. It's nothing. It's bl blubber. Yeah, it's like we we eat it for momentary pleasure, but it causes long term pain. Exactly. Whereas if we create momentary pain, we have long term health and pleasure. Exactly. Well said. Wow. <laughs> a, a Doctor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doctor David Sinclair, who I've had on a couple times as well. He's a, one of the leading scientists out of Harvard who does a lot of this research on, on mice and giving them food and all these tests. And he's, he might've been the one who actually did that test. Yes. But, it, but he talks about that. Um, if you really want to cure cancer, I mean, cure diseases, eliminate inflammation and get rid of all the junk in your body, eat That's less, it. eat yes. better. Uh, how many calories do you think you eat a day? So you eat like around three o'clock and then maybe a dinner or sometimes once a day. Or yeah, sometimes no dinner at all. Uh, 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 you know, I, I just feel how much I need mm. and I will absolutely not overeat. Um, how much calories, how, how much calories are, say, so, uh, sometimes I just eat four slices of good uh, full corn bread with a big mound of butter and <laughs> peanut butter on top. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah, there you go. That's all you'll eat. What, um, yeah. What will you drink throughout the day? Do you, do you drink a lot of water? Do you drink tea? Do you drink coffee, matcha? What do you drink? Yeah, I, I, I like coffee in the morning. Oh, yeah. And then uh, water. Water is, is great. 
and uh, yeah, I take it. And but uh, I have to say, uh, uh, water, liquids, and all, hey, all great. But breathing consciously is really food. Mm. Now, this is another aspect. I mean, the food problem in the world could be solved through this. What I'm going to uh, tell you right now: <clears throat> deep breathing, deeper conscious breathing, influences the mitochondrial aerobic dissimulation. The aerobic, aerobic is oxygen. You know, dissimulation is the process of oxygen getting into the energy factories in the cell, the mitochondria, and it creates uh, molecules, ATP, adenosine or tri triphosphate, whatever it is, it is <laughs> molecules, it's energy. Now listen, cancer lives uh, anaerobically. Anaerobically, we are able to produce two molecules. When we get aerobic dissimulation, we can multiply the amount of energy with, with 19 times, 19 times. So 38 instead of two molecules, 38 molecules. If you breathe the right way, you are able to increase through conscious uh, uh, oxygen uh, 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 bringing in uh, the amount of energy uh, through molecules like 19 times. This should be researched because it, it doesn't cost money to make food, uh, to make molecules. Food equals energy, deep right breathing also equals energy. So what I'm so, hearing you say is that we could, if we breathe better, we could have more energy and we don't need as much food. And, and uh, you know how crazy this can go? There are people, they call themselves breatharians. Okay. And, and they don't even need to eat anymore. No way. Come on. You have to get a breatharian on your podcast. <laughs> I, never heard of, I never heard of this. So wait a minute. You can, look it up. Look it up. You can, and then, you can breathe and cure hunger. There it is. There it is. Yeah, you have to and, eat eventually, right? You can't just go. With, yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be cut like a hundred times the amount of what you eat normally wow. and thrive well. That is Breathe, possible. Breatharians. A, yeah, breatharians. Breatharians. Okay, yes. I'm, I'm making a note of this. Do you know, Just do you look know it up. Any, you know any breatharians? And, and, and get the signs on it. Okay. Because this, you know, one and one is two. Yeah. If we are able to show that breathing better consciously makes great amounts of energy, thus the uh, food intake can go down with, say, 50%. Hey, man, we saved the world. So when we breathe, just so I'm aware of this, when we do uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes of Wim Hof breathing or any type of deep breathing like this, what does that do to our mitochondria? It multiplies the mitochondria? It multiplies the ATP, the okay. molecules. The energy factories begin to become more effective. And, and thus they create more molecules and when we Aerobic have dissimulation and when we have more molecules or more that, energy we don't need as much food is that what i'm hearing you say that is the logic yes because food is to, to bring us more energy throughout the day yes and you know what and and, and and in a lot of cases food is is a lot of in the food so we eat food to get more energy but then a whole lot, whole chunk of that energy is needed to get rid of the additives. So in the end, we create a deficit of nutrients and vitamins for the body. Mm. So uh, th th those are very crucial things because we do it every day. Yeah. So the body, the digestion system is working harder to process the bad foods as opposed to processing the good foods to go to where it needs to go throughout the body. Yes, and it takes a, a, a quite a chunk of energy to process it. It's like garbage coming in. Then, yeah, you need to, uh, to get rid of it. 
So that energy is lost and food should be energy. Now it is plus garbage, then part of that food is going to be a junk, big junk, is going to be used to get rid of the garbage. And besides of that, it is a long term, it is of no good to get yeah. the wrong chemicals inside. It's like poison. You got to deal with the poison. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's the, there's the Wim Hof diet. That's the next book in the future. Uh, I'm curious. You're known for mindset. You're known for breathing. You're known for body challenges, uh, helping get rid of uh, um, sickness and anxiety and stress and overwhelm. You're known for these things. Yes. I'm curious of your thoughts about relationships, something you're not as well known for. I know you in a more intimate way, but what have you learned from the breathing cold therapy that helps you in intimate relationships? You've had obviously challenging past with wife, uh, with mental health challenges who committed suicide. What have you learned now through this practice to help you fortify intimacy with your wife, your partner, and also fortify with your family, your kids and friends? Amazing, yeah, beautiful. Relationships. Uh, as I said in the beginning, you need touch. It's oxytocin. But sometimes people get uh, something in between. And that uh, when something gets in between, then you don't touch as much. And you begin uh, something in the mind gets out and uh, it's like distance. Mm. And that uh, Distance in the mind. Yes, through, uh, in the mind, through the biochemistry insight. And that uh, what I say, if you do these breathing exercises, you get rid of the wrong things in your biochemistry. I tell everybody, do the breathing. You become the alchemist. Not only the alchemist, it's good for your relationship mm -hmm. because you get rid of that what makes the distance go. This is in an unseen terrain. It's a vibrational. But when you are blocked within yourself, you're not able to uh, get your energy over the right way. And sensitively, you can't see it, but it's there. And you, uh, you are in distance. You are in your mind. And you keep on making these loops in the mind instead of just breaking it. I come here, darling. Oh, I love you so much. And, <laughs> she, and, and your, your wife or your partner knows if you are bullshitting, yes or no. <laughs> so what, so do you, what do you do when uh, your, one of your kids is angry at you? Dad, you're, I don't like you when you did this. Or your wife or your partner is mad that you didn't do something what do you do um to overcome just, that yes uh if i uh, if i go into <laughs> the cold water then this worrying about that is over i am it's too cold you i can't, can't think, think about the stress yeah yes you can't think about that stress you're dealing with this stress <laughs> And that's, that, uh, that makes you go away of that what you are feeding. Oh. And then it becomes smaller and suddenly, oh, I love her so much. Because your energy is fully within yourself, clean, nice, there. We are loving beings if it comes to us unconditionally. We are uh, unconditional beings who are in love with it all. But then comes the then comes this stress, and we don't know how to deal with it. And then, uh, you are guilty, you are guilty, you are guilty, etc. No, we got to solve our uh, blockages inside. And uh, it, the cold really knows how to yeah. cut off whatever you got inside. And uh, <clears throat> you got to be there. <clears throat> and the breathing, the breathing exercises, they are very good to regulate I mean, you become very shallow in your breathing if you are angry, if you are blocked. You know, yeah, when you are anxious, <laughs> you are like a, a, a shallow. But when you get into the deep breathing, you break the loop. And the loop is inside the head. And that in mind, neurology, if you go into deep breathing, suddenly goes into deeper parts of the brain. Mm. There is the feeling and there is the being. Just being no words, just being. And you feed it with blood flow, doing deep breathing. Thus you break the loop. 
and then your wife knows it. Your partner will know it because they feel. They know you every inch of your body and your mind. So you can't bullshit nobody. Cleanse yourself and you are open for love once again. <laughs> Do you have any mantras that you deal with? Let's say you're traveling and you're not able to access the cold water oh, in the moment. Do you, when yes. there's a stressful moment that comes up or your yes. wife is angry or whatever, yeah. or your ego gets the best of you and you're shallow, what's yeah. Wim Hof's mantra to get back to whole, happy, strong, healthy? Yes, this, this is interesting. It's a, I think the power of the mind, which I'm showing right now in these studies, uh, which is able to defy... Uh, external stress just by using the mind that, that I think little children be uh, 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 in good traditions of where religion uh, God has a place uh, then uh, before they go to bed they ask God subtly in a prayer to be uh, 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 tomorrow that it is going to be beautiful and nice and, and great that is the power of mantra, that's the power of uh, 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 the subtle power of the intention. That is the power of the mind. We lost that. We, we get in too much TV, too much iPhones, too much this, too much that. Where is the prayer again? The prayer now is no longer related as the church uh, mm -hmm. teaches us because we get so many religions, so many uh, differences. So I got to the neurology inside the brain scans. And I found a universal way to tap into the power of the mind, the subtle power of the mind, the power of our intention. And if that is once again working within us, then nobody wants to do evil things. But people get frustrated. They don't know how to get out. And they, uh, uh, you are guilty and you and this and that. And that. No. Yeah, once you become subtly in command through your own mind, over your own body, then, uh, uh, then uh, that is uh, what I wish uh, everybody to do again. That yeah. is my mantra every day. So when I go in an aeroplane, I always pray, have a little prayer. I say, Tuum umbrum alarum. That is Latin, because I got something with Latin. And it says, <laughs> God, spread your wings uh, and bring me safe to the other side. Wow, that's cool. And I, 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 most times I'm clapping when we land it, and nobody is clapping anymore. <laughs> it's amazing when you go up in the air, you come down, and everybody should clap. Not for the pilot only, but for being safely on the ground, because it's magic. It is magic. So, in Could you imagine a hundred years ago seeing something uh, flying with hundreds of people in the sky? You'd think we were crazy. Sorcerers, witches, <laughs> burn them on the stake. <laughs> exactly. So what's a, what's a daily mantra for you? Something you think of first thing in the morning, throughout the day when you're going through a stressful moment. What, is there something you say to yourself, a phrase over and over yes. again? Yes. In, in, in the morning, just uh, – uh, Rise and uh, make friends with the day. Make friends with your wife, with your children, with everybody, and make sure you do it. You feel it, and they it, it, it reciprocal. You know that it comes back, and that you feel it. If you do that, you got the best foundation for the day. What do you think is your highest priority in life? Uh, highest. If you could rank them, the top three to five priorities for you yes. on a daily basis, what are those? Mm. That, uh, first of all, mm. bring love in your family. Absolutely. That is the greatest. Then uh, bring love in the rest of the world. Heal the world. Uh, believe, uh, uh, believe your good ideals. Always stick to your belief. Invest neurologically in that what you think is good because we are built to be good. And then we are built to be successful. That's the way we are built. The, the way we are schooled is different. But we are built by the laws of nature, by birthright, to be happy, strong, and healthy. So let's be good, remain good forever, 
and do we do not even need the belief it it works that way or you better believe it you invest in something that has a much greater outcome than your investment it's there this is what i do uh, uh, on, on daily basis and besides of it all stay simple stay humble change the world yeah for good what are some key ways to create more joy in our lives? I feel like you do this in a beautiful way, but what would you say are things that the world should be doing more to create more joy? Uh, just breathe, <laughs> breathe, take the cold shower and make sure you are in a command over your happiness, your strength and your health. If you got that because it's physically there and you connect with that, then you are able to pass it on to everybody. A happy man is not longing for anything. He is there. He doesn't go to war. He doesn't create chaos. He creates radiance of love and energy for everybody and mostly even for himself. I mean, it's almost egotistic because you're gonna feel so good. If you heal others, I feel so damn good every time when I see that people come from dark places and they tell me, man, I, I, I burst into tears of happiness. That's what I want. What are ways we can love ourselves more? I feel like self-love is something we should all be doing because the more we love ourselves, the more confidence and love we give to other people and the more we can heal people. How do you fill yourself up with love? I, I, you know, good exercise during the day makes you feel really proud. Body awareness, mm -hmm. deep body awareness that you are there and you went fully. I say, die once a day. <laughs> yeah. Because the life comes fully there. And uh, if I go and I don't feel it, if I don't feel control, Man, you can fight me in the, in, in, in the barrel, f full of water, full of ice for an hour. And that's not penitence. It is, I want to be in control over my physiology by my mind. I want to love myself and the rest of the world. Of course, if I'm not in control, then who and what is uh, in control? Yeah. What, what are we in control of? Over our happiness, strength, and health. Boom. And that is the endocrine system, the immune system, and our energy processes. It's all there. Actually, we are in control by letting go. This is what I say to the people. Learn to control the mind is learning how to let go. Because the body is one with the mind, with the brain. It's one. And the body knows how to solve extreme impact of stress anytime but you have to learn to let go don't stick with the ego with the shallow thoughts of yours there is much more than meets the eye it is the subconscious the autonomic nervous system it's your destiny and it's calling for you and you just have to play go along with the right and uh, enjoy it why, why do you think we hold on to the ego so much because that is our, uh, that, that's the quest of life. We have to go past our thoughts. And uh, if we learn to heal others and just to love others, then we will transcend our ego. Mm. That is what it teaches. It, uh, uh, what uh, uh, our reality wants, what our soul wants is pure, pure love. The, imagine when you were in love with a, 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 the partner coming into your life, Man, what is happening? That's your soul. Your soul is happening and you love it. And, it's a, 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 and the other one, the partner has the same thing. And then we get creations like little children and, <laughs> and, create, and all. But yeah, it, th that's the way it is. And it, 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 it's the light. We are the light and that light comes. But we can create light more in us by uh, healing others and uh, increase it, uh, make it, it's not that it becomes bigger in ourselves. We become maybe famous and all, but the light really is not bigger than 20 years ago when nobody knew who I was. Right. It's not bigger. It is just, I'm doing what I should do. And that feels uh, so great 
uh, deeply inside that I, I have no fear of dying. Because when I die, my soul is blessed. Man, it's Ooh. the way. And I want to show that now in science, in the DNA, in the ancestry, the ancestral genetical codes. This is my next book going to be to get, get back into nativeness. The nativeness is in harmony, being in harmony with nature outside. And that is in love with the, what provides all the goods for us for free. Yeah. And not abuse it and exploit it. And this is the way relationships should go as well. Because we are all part of the same Garden of Eden. Absolutely. I agree on that. I'm curious, Wim, you, what's the, the challenge you have yet to conquer? You've done so many different extreme challenges for your body, your mind. Is there a challenge you've, you look at that is your Everest, that is your like, ah, I've never climbed this, I've never done this thing. Are you still trying to tackle these challenges or has it evolved into something else now? It mostly it has evolved into something else, but physically, I... I I'm 61, and uh, now every year, I was thinking uh, at my birthday, I want to do, uh, you know, one minute more. <laughs> when I'm 62, it's 62 minutes. When I'm 73, 73 minutes. When I'm 96, 96 minutes. Uh, yeah. But then I thought, no, I can't do that. I can't do that already. That, that's, <laughs> that's not difficult. You know, the oldest participant right now, in this method is 98 years old wow man beat that so the, uh, 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 what i want is, is within my life show my mount everest my more than mount everest is to uh, bring happiness strength and health the soul the soul where it belongs within our consciousness within our experience every day i want to bring love as it is, no longer a mellow yellow kind of experience. Strong love, strong love, full of strength, very tender. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the greatest fear for you that you've yet to conquer or embrace? I think the, the, the greatest fear, if you are a father, is the, uh, with your children. And uh, yeah, and the, and the rest, it's, it's flourishing now. It's a flourishing. My life is flourishing, and it has come from belief. When I had nothing, like very little money, and a lot of stress and all, I still was happy because I was able to go into the cold, into the uh, breathing and the exercising, and that made me g uh, feel great without uh, uh, the aid of external compensation, as we talked in the beginning. So uh, uh, wh what is... Uh, I forgot the question. Greatest fear you've yet to conquer oh, yeah. or overcome. Yeah. I'm sorry. I ain't got no good. fears no more. <laughs> that, that it is. That's good, it's man. A, the fear. You know, I was just talking about the fear. When, when you are happy, you have no fear. When you are in love, you have no fear. You just want to do what you are uh, feeling. You, you go and there is no fear. You overtake everything. Because the power of the mind is related to the love uh, 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 which you experience. Then suddenly everything in the brain is as, uh, of usage of you to serve you to get to the uh, other side. So then fear has no uh, uh, place. Fear is a signal that something is wrong inside. Ooh, yeah. And we have to listen to the signal, internalize and solve the matter. Well, it could be an emotional fear, mental fear, physical fear. It could be uh, viral, bacterial, uh, uh, spiritual. It doesn't matter. It's all fear. And the brain, the mind knows. It gives a signal. Don't kill the messenger. Go and follow the messenger. And then ask, what is the problem? Get this connection deeply within, like with the food. Talk to you. Your body is talking to you. And you are not listening. The fear is beautiful. It is a, is a, a very sensitive uh, messenger. Mm -hmm. It comes in all its fear. It comes to you. 
please listen to me. No, don't kill me. Bam, bam, you go down. No, uh, I follow you. Okay, where are you? Oh, of course. That, that's internalization. That is meditation. Yeah. That way, uh, through the breath, we are able to go with the mind into deeper tissue. Because the breath is like water. It goes everywhere. When we go into deeper breathing, it goes deeper in the tissue. There could be the blockage, the inhibition. There, the fear started. And then you are able to solve because we are the alchemists, all of us. So you don't fear death anymore. How old would you love to live towards, uh, too? I live as long as I will accomplish my task is to bring love to the world. Are you trying to extend yeah. your life as long as possible? Or are you oh, just man, like the most- Oh man, I will outlive everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no problem about that. I feel so alive and I, I am really, I am in control. I am in control and I will show in the DNA how to lengthen the telomeres responsible for the span of our life, the cell division. I am doing that now in december we get the results so i'm actually on top of it mm. this is it first i make a study of something and then i'm gonna do it there you go i love that what yeah, are man. you what are you a couple final questions for you Wim. what are you most proud of about your kids they are all working with me now all of them and, yeah i mean the four uh, the, the, four the, the biggest ones, ones. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. tall uh, yeah 37, 35, 34, and 32, they're all working with me. That's and pretty cool. Yes, when I went to the primary school to get them, I always, of them, Dad, act normal. Because in wintertime, I went with my shorts to the school, and uh, you know, the, and doing handstands and splits on the, on the courtyard <laughs> while the people, these people waiting on the side for the children, smoking cigarettes, saying, uh, uh, look at that guy, he's crazy, uh, uh, you know? Uh, so I had to act normal. Now, my daughters, where, uh, who are graduates, they, uh, 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 they, uh, they are doing the Wim Hof Method mm. as an instructor. Wow, and they, that's cool. They love it. So completely changed. Of course, that makes me proud. Wow. And I, I just love it. And I all also teach them, be humble, simple, but very confident within you. You're able to heal a lot, so many people. Do mm. it. Go. That's beautiful. Yeah. And what's the thing you admire about your wife the most? The, oh, the, my wife right now? Oh, everything. She, she, she knows more of me than me myself. <laughs> So I want her around. <laughs> Where is this? Where is this? Uh, did you see this? Do you know how the computer works? Yeah. I'm helpless without her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, not really, but it makes life so much more quality. Yeah. It gives me so much more love, so much more. This nest warmth, it's ridiculous. It's so beautiful. I don't need to travel. I don't need to climb mountains, etc. I want to stay in my garden. And now I, I, I got a new project. And the new project is I want to make an interactive garden. And with that, I will show that you, we are, uh, as humans, we all have gardens. Uh, for those who have gardens, uh, 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 we are able to experience the depth of our physiology mentally and physically in our garden. Hmm. I, I, I recently now, I, I made a project with rocks, 100 ton of rocks, uh, uh, piled it up to uh, four meters high almost, and you can jump into the cold pool. That means you become aware when wow. you jump in and you gotta make the decision. That's the hormetic stress. The, uh, the, the, uh, how do you, yeah, the, yeah, delayed gratification. Uh, delayed gratification. And that it is. And at that moment, it's really there. And then you yeah. jump and you feel great because we are more than we understand of ourselves. But, and the cold water is able to open up everything. Yeah. So I want to make an interactive garden where the flowers are beautiful, 
but and the and the sensations the experiences go really to the primordial depth itself yeah man that, that, that's, that's my new thing because i don't want to go away of my wife anymore <laughs> I want to well, stay home. <laughs> get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, if I get too comfortable, you know what I'm doing. I get into the barrel. That's not good. for the wine, but for the icy water. Exactly. <laughs> and when I'm back on, I'm back on. Well, Wim, I, uh, I'm very grateful for you. And uh, I'm very appreciative that we got to spend time together before the madness of the world happened back in January in Poland. I feel like it was a great experience for all of us but to prepare us for what has come over the last nine months and what is to come and hopefully in the next year or two years i can see you again and uh you'll either be here in la and we'll do some ice therapy in the cold water or i'll be in berlin or somewhere so hopefully i can do it again in the future uh, uh you've got you've got a book out wim hof method finally i feel like everyone's written books about you and now you finally have your own book yeah. which which breaks down a lot of this stuff about breathing, cold, mindset, science, health, performance. Um, we've got your story in here, your spiritual awakening, but a lot of great stuff. If you just want to get started, maybe you're not ready to dive in yet to the breathing and the cold, this would be the place to start so you can learn more about it. I highly recommend getting this book. I've endorsed it on the back as well. And get the free Thank you. app. Of course, yeah, and Thank get the you, man. yeah, and get the uh, if people download the free app, it's going to be a game changer for them to get started with their breathing. This is a simple way to get started. I love this app. Wim is guiding you, he's coaching you, he's supporting you through this. You can do it for ten minutes, five minutes, and get started, and you truly feel a physiological difference, and you feel better within minutes, moments of doing the breathing. So. Download the app. It's called the Wim Hof Method app. I think you can get it for free on the App Store. Get the book. It's online. It's on Wim's site or anywhere you buy books, Amazon, stuff like that. And when Wim opens up more workshops in the future, when we're allowed to do stuff, sign up for one. Go to your site. Uh, are you just WimHof.com? Are you uh, WimHofMethod.com? Where can they go? Yes. For, yeah. WimHofMethod.com. Go there and get on the wait list for when the world opens up and you can go do an experience in Poland with Wim. It's an incredible time. You'll climb a mountain with no clothes on except for shorts, four and a half hours. You'll do uh, cold therapy. You'll meditate. You'll do a lot of great stuff. Check it out. Also, follow Wim on social media. He's active over on social media. Got great content to remind you about who you are, why you're deserving of love, and why you're deserving of a happy, strong life. Wim, are there any final thoughts, my friend? I'm really grateful for you. I'm always appreciative of our time together, but do you have any final thoughts? Yes, I, uh, I have to appreciate your school of greatness because it is greatness what you show. Through your, you're a handsome man, big man. I know you, you're <laughs> much bigger than I am. But we, are all, uh, we both live for the greatness of our spirits and the love. And we are sharing this within the world. And every day we do it again and again. And we stand up, we rise again, and we are shining lights together. For that, I thank you. Of course, my man. Well, I appreciate you. I'm very grateful for you. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to share with a friend. Make sure to post it on stories, on social media. Let Wim know that you enjoyed this as well and your favorite part. Again, get his book, Wim Hof Method. It's going to help you a big time in your life. Wim, you're a rock star, my man. I appreciate you and love you very much, my friend. And if you want to learn how to become happier in your life, then make sure to check out this video right here. Only in the last hundred years has it even been conceivable that you could get paid money to do what you love. This is a brand new idea. So I am in favor of doing what you love and charging for it if you can.